Yeah, I look forward to that very much next week. Thank you, Michael. Our next guest is George Kuchar, who we'll meet right after we take a look at a clip from his new film, Secrets of the Shadow World. They have a lot of uh, tweeds and stuff in them, like they were like they were all uh, poured on on site. Yeah. There's like weeds and uh, grass and stuff. Wow, and there's what a little uh, pile of them over there. Yeah. Is that representing oh, fecal matter or not a Sasquatch fecal matter? <laughs> they should have some here. Hey, you're gonna go to Shasta if, if John Keel comes to yes, town? Yes, I would love to. That'd be a great. That, that'd be terrific. That's uh, like meeting Ivan T. Sanderson. You knew Ivan T. Sanderson. I know. Yeah. They were yeah. friends. And Ivan T. Sanderson hung out with a guy named Bernard Hivelman. You know. Oh about yeah, that? yeah. He was interested he was, in sea serpents and all. Yeah. He was a real big granddad. Oh. Well, thank you so much for showing me the but, Sasquatch yeah. art here. Good. See, Sasquatch fecal matter is very important. That's why I brought it up, because there was a student here at the Art Institute who liked the Sasquatch and went with his dog to the Pacific Northwest to try and find the Sasquatch. Yeah. And uh, he sat down next to a tree and then turned around and saw a massive turd. And he said, fresh, it, a fresh one yeah, it was kind of fresh. And it was too big, he said, for a human being to have made it. Yeah, and it wasn't a bear turd, and he believes it was a Sasquatch turd, and he got very much afraid. Wow. It's a true story, yeah. Joining us now is George Kuchar, who some describe as a folk artist. He has a complete vision, he doesn't over-intellectualize his work, and he makes films for himself, not to impress other filmmakers or critics. His offbeat new video, Secrets of the Shadow World, centers on the work of paranormal investigator John Keel, who studied Bigfoot, Roswell, and flying saucers. George, welcome to Independent View. Thanks a lot. It's a beautiful set. Thank you. Let's start at the beginning. I know you began making movies with your twin brother, Mike, way back in the 50s when you were a kid. What got you started? Well, uh, my mom used to take us to the movies, and I very much enjoyed going to the movies. And it was... Uh, I had a lot of impact. I would see pictures of, like plane crashes and people stuck on mountains and stuff like that. And um, I wanted to make movies. So these were Hollywood movies. These were plain old mainstream yeah, movies. Big Hollywood. My mother liked Barbara. Uh, Barbara, what's her name? She Stanwyck. died. Barbara Stanwyck. And um, and so I wanted to make pictures. And How so my aunt had a camera. And. Uh, my, I borrowed it from my aunt. At that time, my mom and, and aunt were talking. Not and anymore. No, that ended. So you were influenced by Hollywood movies? Yeah, very and what, much. And, and what did you love about them? Well, I thought it had a beautiful style, especially the Douglas Sirk melodramas. I thought it had a beautiful style and the way the music came in, and it seemed like uh, grown-up people performing in, in a nice manner. And then there was the other side of the coin, which was the Roger Corman pictures. And they were grown up people, but they didn't seem to have been grown up. They were trying to make movies and mistakes would happen. But it was interesting for me, because then you could see on the other side of the camera, like you saw things happening and it seemed like an interesting revelation. So did you aspire to go to Hollywood at some point? No, I don't think I'm very good at meetings. I hate going to meetings, and also, I think actors want to know exactly what the character is, and sometimes I don't know, and, and you have to invent. And also, I wouldn't want to jeopardize all that money. Somebody but, else's money. Somebody else's money. That's you know responsible. I mean? Yeah, I didn't want to do that. I, I would feel too much under pressure, and I also don't want to constantly try to feel like I have to make hits. Now, you eventually studied painting and illustration, I understand. How does that inform your work? Well, you know, I went to art, it was a high school, and I had talent in drawing. I took, I used to watch John Nagy on television, where you can draw, you watch him and you can draw. And then, um... That's I, better than the paint by numbers kids, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, the paint by numbers are, are out, I guess. But then, um... I went to a commercial art high school, and the commercial art world was horrible. You know, people yelling at one another, ulcers, and it was a monstrous world, so I wanted to get out of that. Commercial art wasn't for me. I liked illustrating, so I used to make comic books, you know, my own comic books. Do you and think drawing, do you think that kind of art talent is a useful skill for a filmmaker? Yeah, very much. You know why? Because it's in a box. You've got to draw in a box, and you're like, you have Frame. to advance, yeah, you have to advance the stories and stuff. So that was good. Then you've got to put dialogue. You have to put it in a bubble. So that was all helpful to me, and also lighting. 
because I like painting, but I like to look like it had lighting on the set, what you were painting, so you could do shadows and stuff and like that. Yeah. So, so, so it turns it. out that it, you were one of the forerunners of underground films, in a way, in New York in the early 70s. What was that like? Well, you know, I was making movies. There was also another guy who was making pictures, and he was making cinemascope pictures, an 8 millimeter. He had a lens that spread out a scene. And so there was a lot of us making pictures. A friend of mine liked cannibalism. And I think there's something about the Bronx that, I don't know if George Romero comes from the Bronx. Or Cleveland, maybe. Yeah, Cleveland. <laughs> They're into cannibalism. And so we were all making movies, and our outlets would be parties. We would go to each other's houses and have a party. And then, uh, I don't know, then there was that burgeoning underground film movement in the 60s. I think there's still a vestige of that in your work. Yeah, you know, it's we, still we, there. we want to show another slice of Shadows of the Secrets of the Shadow Secrets World. Of the yeah. So you want to tell us what we're about to see? All right, Secrets of the Shadow World is, isn't almost like a feature, it's just a long movie, a long video. But uh, the scene we're going to see, if that's the one with the coming down from the tower, yep. that's at the Art Institute, the San Francisco Art Institute where I teach. And this picture was about the paranormal. So every once in a while, the students would mention to me strange things that had occurred to them. Let's, hear, let's hear one of the, one of the students. What did you do? You, you met the real chup, Chupacabra? Yeah, um, well, uh, well, we well, think, think it was the Chupacabra. Would he have red eyes, you mentioned? Or? Yes, he had this little red, red light. light. I mean, it looked like, 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 like that right there on the camera, camera. but it was really dark. dark. And all you could see is these bright, bright fiery, fiery dots. dots. And, and this, this noise, noise that it, that it sounded, sounded like, like, a, like, like an engine, engine like, 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 like really low, low frequency. It had like a mechanical noise or? Um. Oh, it sounded like a, what, like a, was it like part, uh, part monster and part machine or? It was kind of like, um, like a mechanic noise, but it, I mean, it, it, it was constant, but it sounded more like an animal, some kind of creature, yeah, like an animal, it wasn't a machine, no. George, UFOs pop up in a lot of your work. What is your fascination with aliens and UFOs? Well, you know, I always wanted to see a flying saucer, but I didn't.